Okay, so uh, welcome back. This is our, our third go at this specific problem. Uh, so we initially did it with the, the method of sections, uh, and I'll put a, a card up in the top corner uh, in case you missed that and you want to go back and do the method of sections. Uh, it's where we started. It's also where we resolved our free body diagram to get the external reactions. So uh, although they're shown here, I'm not going to go through that again. So, so back to that first uh, uh, attempt at this problem uh, if you need to see that. Uh, we went through it a second time. We used the method of joints. We went through it very deliberately, isolating each joint and doing the sum of the forces in both the x and the y direction. Uh, and uh, that's the method that we're going to do. So if you missed that one, uh, I highly recommend you watch that before you watch this because that shows the very pedantic, deliberate application of the theory in that video. So I'll put a, a link up here uh, so that if you uh, do want to go through that, uh, again, I would recommend you do that first before you do it here. What I'm going to show you here is really just more of a, a bookkeeping shortcut. Going to do a little bit more mental math, uh, a little bit less uh, pedantic note keeping. That may or may not be acceptable in your circumstance, so you have to figure that one out yourself. It certainly it was shown to me uh, by one of my professors when I was an undergrad. A uh, little shout out to Peter Jarrett. Don't know where you are these days, Peter, but I uh, hope you're doing well, uh, hopefully sailing the oceans. And it, it meant a lot to me. I was able to easily see the flow uh, through the structure, through the truss, and uh, I've been using it uh, certainly ever since, and I teach it to, to, to my students. So I'm going to show you the method of joints. Uh, I call it the graphical method. It really is just a, a note-taking uh, shortcut, uh, if you will. So what I've done, I've of course, resolve for the external reactions. You have to do the outside before you look in. Uh, so that's been done. That's shown up there. Uh, it was done previously. And now what I've done is I've drawn out my free body diagram again in large scale because I want to be able to use it as the uh, note-taking backdrop, if you will, uh, for the method of joints moving through my truss one side to the other. The, the one thing I want to do, and I'm going to set this up to demonstrate. Of course, we used in the last instance, we used the ratio, the vertical and horizontal ratio of the members because it's a truss. So we know that the forces have to line up in those same ratios as the geometric ratios. And in this particular instance, these have a ratio three, four, five. And I'm going to write those down inside very specifically because I don't want them to get in my way. When, it, when I go around really outside. Uh, and now I'm going to just start to apply my equations of static equilibrium one joint to the next, and I'm going to work through it. So I'm going to start again at joint A. So just as a reminder, joint A is down here. Let me as well label all of these. I'll, I'll So we're going to start at joint A, and I am going to apply, again, the sum of the forces in the y direction. I'm choosing the y direction because I see that I have a component, right? So, so I have two members coming in. One is strictly horizontal, so it can only provide a horizontal force, and that's the member AE, and the member AB is on an angle, so it has a vertical component. So I only have one unknown vertical component. And so I'm going to apply the sum of the forces in the y direction. I have 2.11 pushing up. So I know that that vertical component of AB has to be pushing down with that same value. So I'm going to indicate that it has to be pushing down. But of course, I, I put the arrow along the line of action of the, the member. And then at the vertical component, I know that it has to be acting with a value or a magnitude of 2.111. With one of those components resolved, I'm able to apply my 3, 4, 5 triangle and ratios to get the other components. So I can get the horizontal component, 1.583, and I can get the actual magnitude of the force, 2.639. Uh, worth noting that everything is in kilonewtons, and I don't want to mess up my diagram by writing that in every time because we're going to run out of space. And to finish that off, because that is 
down and left, it has to be equal and opposite at the other side. So I'm going to put my arrowhead in there. So let's finish off the joint. So we have to look at the member AE. So we have one kilonewton to the right from the reaction. We have 1.583, which is the horizontal component pushing left from AB. So we know that we have to be pulling to the right. So I'll put in my arrows here. And I may as well throw in my equal and opposite at the same time. And that value, once I run it through my calculator, what's left is 0 0.583. And I'm going to carry on. So joint E makes the most sense to me now because I have uh, a left component coming into it of 0 0.583. So I have to have a right component and equal and opposite of 0 0.583. And if I look at the vertical component, we know that that member must equal zero. So now I'm going to go up to joint B uh, and I'm just having a quick look to see if I want to go vertical or horizontal. May as well go vertical. It might be the easiest one to do. So AB is 2.11 vertical component up. So I'm going to have to have, we have zero at AB. So the only thing left is this has to be equal to 2.111 down in order to balance off that vertical component of AB. So I'm going to draw that equal and opposite, and then go ahead and resolve these components in accordance with the three, four, five ratios. And I'll finish my joint at B by resolving BC, so some of the forces. So I, uh, in the X direction, I have 2.11 from AB going to the right. I have, uh, oh, pardon me, I misspoke, 1.583 the horizontal component of AB going to the right, 1.583, the horizontal component of BF also going to the right. And so when those add together, we get a horizontal component of 3.166, and it has to push to the left. And then I go equal and opposite going into joint C, and I can draw that in there. So if I go, joint C is the, the simplest one to go to next. If I go some of the forces in the X direction, I have 3.166 from BC going to the right. I have the applied load of one kilonewton at C going to the left and a horizontal component of CD that needs to balance it is our only unknown. And so I can figure that is 2.166 and it needs to add to the one kilonewton to get equilibrium at C and I will go equal and opposite down there and apply my ratio of my triangle to get my other components. And that leaves us, uh, what, two, two uh, oh, I have to finish my joint at C because I haven't done the vertical components. So I have 2.889 from CD acting up. So this one must also be 2.889 acting down. And now I can resolve either joint F or joint D to uh, look to uh, the member FD. So I'm going to look at joint D because it's the simplest. I have a single X component. Uh, coming from CD, so that 2.166 is a horizontal component pushing it to the right. So I must have 2.166 in FD and pulling it to the left. And that resolves all of our uh, members. It does it fairly quickly. Uh, it does leave for a degree of either mental math or, or unrecorded math. Uh, so, you know, one of the risks of doing it this way is if you don't close and you don't check it, you haven't left yourself a, a lot of note taking uh, to go back and check. But that being said, it's a fairly straightforward addition and subtraction problem getting through one to the next. And you always have the chance to check it by closing it so you know if you've gotten it right or not. 
uh, at the end. So the one thing we do have to do is to identify whether these members are in tension or compression. Now, this is the method of joints. And quite often, what I find is people, when they look at the member, so if we look at AB, for example, it looks like it, you know, with these arrows pulling on it, that it's in tension. But this is the method of joints. So those arrows are actually pushing on the joints. Uh, the, the forces are indicating the forces on the joints. So if it's pushing on the joints, the joints are pushing on the member. And so that that member is actually in compression. And I'll denote that with a C underneath it. So just as a, if I were to draw that out, that is going to be compression. That is going to be tension. And you can appreciate by the look of them that that is a little bit counterintuitive. So that's one thing you have to make sure that you understand if you're going to uh, use this note-taking method, that it looks like forces on the members, but they're actually forces on the joints. And so it flips them around. So with that done, we can very quickly go through. That's in tension. That is in tension. That is in tension. Here we have tension, compression, compression. And I guess the last one we have to do is that is in tension. So that's it. Uh, that wraps it up. Uh, again, uh, like before, you probably want to do some kind of a summary, or perhaps uh, this is your summary. It's a graphical uh, representation of what all the forces are. You can take it and start calculating internal stresses and whatnot. So uh, a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, but a little bit short of uh, recording or bookkeeping, uh, if you will. So if that's useful to you, great. Uh, I think it does show the flow through the, uh, the planar truss uh, better than the, the more deliberate method, although the more deliberate method certainly records all of your calculations and explains exactly what it is that you're doing in a more deliberate way. Okay, we'll uh, see you on the next one.